Okay, so welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we want to analyze two proofs of the following summation over here. We have 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 3 plus 1 over 1 plus 2 plus 3 and then so on and so forth like uh, 1 over 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 1 over 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 all the way and so on and um, adding the sum is actually going to equal 2. So this is actually a very interesting summation. So I know that I mentioned there's two proofs. One way is to analyze it in an analytical and the second is a... Um, in a, ver in a visual perspective, which is very nice. Uh, if you notice that, um, so I'll give one spoiler away for how the video is going to be formatted. Uh, if you take a look at the denominator closely, they actually forms a little summation. And if you analyze that a little carefully, that's actually in a way it forms the sum of the natural numbers. Or really in other words, um, well, if we're actually taking this towards infinity, it really, it's, well, not really infinity, it's actually all the way up to the partial sum n, then you'll notice that that actually also forms what's known as a, um, the triangular numbers. That basically just says that you take, um, for each iteration, so you add, um, you add one to the predecessor, so if you start with one, then the next one would be um, two below the first, so that's three, then three below that, so that's six, and then there's actually a little form, the formula is also similar to, you know, the some of the natural numbers in that sense. So we'll be uh, using that to our per, um, we'll be using that for our um, discretion, but also I'll also draw the proof of the visual as well. But I'll, I'm going to save that for last. So let's actually just get to the first part. So I just I, so I just mentioned from the denominator below. So we have one plus two plus three. So we notice that one plus two plus three plus four, all the way up to n. We notice that um, the following formula is actually known as you know the sum of the um, n, na n natural numbers, but the um, formula gives out it's actually just n times n plus 1, then divided by 2. But you also know that that's also equal to the um, the partial sum from k is equal to 1 of just um, k. So we use that. So let's actually call this entire series over here, I'll just call this s. And this whole thing is a su is a um, infinite sum, don't forget. So let's see, this is an infinite sum here. n is equal to one. And then this is just one divided by and replace the denominator everything with yet another um, sum, the partial sum that we just defined over here. So this is n, k is equal one of k. All right, well, I'll just replace this with, with the um, recursive formula over here. So basically it's just one over this formula, but just flip the reciprocal. So in other words, we have the infinite sum from n is equal to 1 of 2 divided by n times n plus 1. So from there, that's nice. Now what I can do is let's just factor out the 2. So it's 2 times the um, infinite sum of n is equal 1. Same thing. Now notice that the following denominator, or rather the fraction, fraction itself. So we know that 1 over n times n plus 1, if you actually do the um, partial fraction decomposition, that's very straightforward to do, so I'm just skip the work, uh, is actually just 1 over n, then add this with, or not add, subtract, uh, subtract with 1 divided by n plus 1, alright, so I can just replace the, whatever our series is, replace it with the um, partial decomposition the partial fraction decomposition. So this is two times the infinite sum, n is equal to one of our partial fraction decomposition. So this is one over n subtract with one over n plus one. Now let's actually expand this series out a little bit further. So you notice that we have two, then if I plug for one, so it's just one over one, uh, subtract with one over two, add this with one over two, subtract with one over three, Add this with 1 over 3, um, you just keep going so on and so forth. What you notice is that um, the terms cancel out, so this is actually known as a telescoping series. So you have terms that cancels out, and the only thing left are the first and the last terms. If we were to take this term all the way up to infinity, you'll notice that it's just going to be 0. So really, the only thing we have is that, um, so we have the um, sum over here, we have that s is equal to 2 in d like so 
All right, so that takes care of one proof. That is the, um, the analytical method. So I'm now going to show you the visual method. So this requires a, a graph. So if you give me one second just to sketch that graph and then um, I'll, I'll continue forward from there. Okay, so here um, we're actually, in order to verify that the following um, summation over here is equal to two with the uh, visual proof, we're gonna actually call the function y equals two over x, okay? And then I just I denote the little dash or squiggle or zigzag lines over here just for the extension that goes all the way up to n to n plus one. And then um, now if I were to take if I were to take rectangular areas and calculate the left endpoints, I know the graph is not as you know exactly the way it is. I'm no artist, but I'm just giving you the um, the perspective of what the graph is supposed to be and what how to proceed from here. So if we were to take the area of the um, rectangles from the each interval, subinterval from one, and then of course taking the left endpoints. So that means if I draw a rectangle here and here, so we have one area calculated right here. Then the next, we do the same thing. We have another area. Notice that the triangles keep getting, the area of the triangle keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Then if I were to take the area of these two, so basically it's just rectangles, one times two, then times the um, height. So then um, this is just one over here. You do the same thing here. This is uh, one over three. Then over here, this is one over six. You just keep going so on and so forth. Now, if I were to do the same thing over here, take the left endpoints from here, then here, and if I were to calculate its rectangle, so it's just space times height, then divided by two. In other words, if I, um, if we do it this way, so we have one, then multiply with, um, so let's see, we have two over n, then we subtract this with two over n plus one. But in other words, um, this is actually the same as you can calculate the, um, the triangular number at the binomial coefficient of n plus one and then two. And then if you were to take all these sums together, so let's see, I'll take one for, um, for example, I'll do it like this. This is area with one, this is area with one over three, area with one over six, and then you just keep going so on and so forth all the way to the last one which that's we said that this is just um one over the binomial coefficient of n plus one there's no um there's no horizontal line this is not a fraction so this is supposed to be binomial coefficient of n plus one and then choose two now if you take all this up together you'll get that this entire um the length or yeah, the area of the triangles of the sum of the, tri of the rectangles, triangles, rectangles is indeed supposed to come up to two like so. And there we have it. We have our visual proof and our analytical proof um, summed up in one video. And it's a very interesting summation if you ask me. So, um, yep, no other words to say. So that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.